Today on Journalism Showcase, Kyle DuPont reports on climate change. I think it has to do with local history being taught. Jeff Stairs looks at the importance of historical buildings. And I look at how communities are staying healthy. Hello, I'm Mike Trusiak. Welcome to Journalism Showcase, produced entirely by New Brunswick Community College students. Throughout this program, we'll be showcasing work from the fall of 2011. But first, about 250 people in Moncton took to the square outside City Hall this past October. The gathering was to show solidarity with the now infamous Occupy Wall Street protest in New York. Occupy Moncton organizers Katia McAvoy says the movement's popularity shows more people want more communications with their governments. I think the Occupy movement is a chance to get a revolution, to get things changed. There are today, up to date, uh, 1,666 uh, cities in the world that are doing this. Uh, there is places that, like Wall Street that have been doing it for 29 days today. So I think that it's the opportunity to start getting a dialogue with our governments. The Occupy movement still continues today, but has lost most of its media attention. Canadian drivers have their license when they are teenagers. After a few years, maybe even decades on the road, many drivers can get a little rusty. Tony Bourgeois spoke with drivers that don't think they would do too well if they had to retake the test. Some drivers have had their licenses for decades and have not thought of the driver's test since the day they took it. What if they had to take it again? Probably would be in the 80% to 90%. Yep. I'd probably fail. <laughs> More than likely, I can't parallel park. Um, I think I'd do all right, but I'd probably forget something like signaling when you're pulling back out and, you know, the little small things that you don't really think of on a day-to-day -day basis. A University of Calgary study shows nearly 90% of experienced drivers would not pass their Class 7 learner's test. Lynn Gibson is a driving instructor. She agrees many people would not be able to pass their test if they had to take it again. <laughs> they probably wouldn't be able to, I'd say quite a few people wouldn't pass it 20 years after they take their license because of the parallel parking. Gibson believes most experienced drivers avoid parallel parking and would be out of practice for the test. She also does not believe many would do well in the written portion because things have changed since they took their test. I, I'd say today if someone had their license for 30 years or more they probably wouldn't be able to pass the permit test today. <clears throat> a lot of new rules, a lot of new signs out here that people don't even know what they are. The new driving rules are available online and at your local motor vehicle branch. Gibson urges people to look up the new rules and signage every so often, but doesn't believe people will take it upon themselves to do so. In Woodstock, Tony Bourgeois, Community College News. Winter is now here, and roads are becoming treacherous for New Brunswickers. We examine how drivers can keep themselves safe during the winter months. Winter, an unavoidable part of life in New Brunswick. Many drivers take precautions to protect themselves and their vehicles from dangerous winter driving conditions. Uh, I get winter tires put on it, I get it serviced at the garage. What else do I have to do? Not much else. Winter tires and that one I actually put up for the winter. I, t I get out something else to drive around in. I just put it in the garage. I leave for Florida in November so I don't have to worry about it. Come back again and race you go. Garages sell hundreds of winter tires. This one selling over 1,200 last winter alone. But owner Jeff Wright often warns consumers all season tires are not enough. Winter tires by far are, are much safer than all season tires. They have a different rubber compound. They're a softer rubber compound and when it hits freezing, it, they, it maintains its grip on the road better than an all season tire does. Wright thinks the provincial government should make winter tires mandatory as they are in Quebec. Um, I know they did a study in the province of Quebec a few years ago and they looked at all the accidents that occurred and over 70% of the vehicles that were in accidents had all season tires on them. Changing your tires is not the only thing you should consider. Garages also recommend changing the oil and checking the antifreeze. A group concerned with climate change in Carleton County is frustrated. Several public meetings they organized this fall was met with little interest. 
Reporter Kyle Dupont was one of the few to attend. A group from the Fallsbrook Center planned three public meetings to talk about adapting to climate change in rural New Brunswick. Ten people showed up for the first meeting and most were from their organization. This concerns organizer Emily Shapiro. This is an issue that I think we're tackling more and more. Um, we brought up uh, the disconnect with, um, with reality. I think we spend a lot of time uh, on the computer. We spend a lot of time in front of the television. We spoke to some students who didn't attend the meeting and heard a variance in understanding of the issue. All I know is it's getting hotter and hotter. Uh, we, uh, nothing really, I guess. Um, I just know that our climate is changing because of global warming. Shapiro believes that youth are not engaging in the discussion about climate change. She says that they view it as such a huge problem that it is hard to play a viable, active role in the solution. But it also seems like a problem that maybe doesn't, doesn't affect us or doesn't relate to our daily lives. The environmental group remains optimistic and will hold another public meeting in December. They hope for more involvement from the community. In Woodstock, Kyle DuPont, Community College News. Fires in the home during the holidays are all too common, but there are measures you can take to be safe. Caitlin Olmsted has more. The holiday decorations are up, inside and out. Businesses like this one take care not to overload electrical circuits and instead use energy efficient LED lights. Uh, most of the lights be that's behind us we usually turn off at night, but there is uh, a string in the window that we leave on. But um, they're very safe, they're cool to the touch. Homeowner Deborah Helly is careful when she burns candles because of her five cats. Uh, the candles that I have are all the kind that are set down into a heavy glass container so there's no open flame to knock over. The fire department recommends you change the battery in your smoke alarm once a year. Remember, test the alarm. Fire Chief Ricky Nicholson says you should have one alarm on each floor. Nicholson says burning candles should never be left unattended. He says curtains should be kept away from the baseboard heater. During the holidays, he warns people that a dry tree is a hazardous tree. You gotta make sure they're watered, like a real tree water. Unplug the lights. Don't run these extension cords. Use CSA approved lights. Use CSA approved extension cords. Nicholson recommends having a fire extinguisher in the central area of your home and near a wood stove. Be sure you have the right type of extinguisher. You gotta go purchase one. Make sure it's dry chemical A, B, C. That is for your combustion materials, that's for your grease, and that's for your electrical fires. Homeowners are urged to unplug their indoor and outdoor lights when not home. Fires can be prevented by being aware of the potential hazards. In Woodstock, Caitlin Olmsted, Community College News. Coming up, drivers and truckers are being hit hard with the rising cost of diesel. How are they going to make ends meet? I don't know. Welcome back. To see more of our work, visit jschoolnbcc.ca. Fredericton hosted the 2011 Canadian Under-18 Soccer Championships this October. Up to a thousand people descended on the capital city for 50 soccer games. More than 400 players and 100 officials from 20 clubs across the country attended. The Green Initiative at NBCC Woodstock has been shut down. The committee was created two years ago to explore ways for the campus to become environmentally friendly. Jillian Trainer explains that the group's ideas could be implemented at other campuses. The Green Campus Initiative was only supposed to last one year. However, Principal Tim Marshall was able to get the program extended to two. The campus implemented several strategies to make the school a greener workplace. Our approach was to, to try some different things here in, in Woodstock and which we have and we have shared that information and those successes that we've had with the other campuses. Marshall says the Green Committee thought of a way to reduce waste going into a landfill. For example we banned the sale of bottled water here in Woodstock uh, which we believe is, is a good thing for the environment. Students can instead fill water bottles at any fountain in the school. Student Council gave everyone a reusable water bottle. 
Other achievements of the committee include switching light bulbs in the school to energy efficient ones. Carpooling spaces were set aside solely for the use of carpooling students. Woodstock Mayor Art Slip says the carpooling spots are a good idea and he hopes they stay. Anyway, when the college came forward with the carpooling program, we thought that was a wonderful, wonderful initiative and we were very, very pleased to work with them to provide some support for this uh, spaces, for these spaces that you have here. NBCC President and CEO Marilyn Luscombe says that the Green Campus Initiative is not disbanded, merely on a hiatus. In Woodstock, Jillian Trainer, Community College News. Across Canada, provincial governments are pushing for more green energy. Ontario and Nova Scotia are leading the way in solar and wind energy. And an energy expert in renewable energy says New Brunswick is falling behind. Kyle DuPont examines the trend. In an attempt to become a greener province, New Brunswick has implemented two renewable energy plans, net metering and an embedded energies program. Both add green energy back to the grid. The net metering uh, program, um, which allows individuals and, and, and uh, small-scale commercial entities to install uh, renewable energy um, either in their home or their small business, uh, and use that to produce their own electricity, to, re to reduce uh, the electricity they use or, or, require, or are required to purchase from MB Power for their own use. Uh, so that offsets their existing energy usage. Melvin says the Embedded Energies program is focused on large-scale projects. MB Power will buy the energy produced and pay 9.7 cents per kilowatt hour. The province and MB Power have another problem, the lack of education about renewables. Installing a wind turbine or solar panels requires a trained professional to do so, which is something Jody Greer, electrical instructor, says there is not enough of in the province. There's rules and regulations that you have to follow, and really there's, there's no one to call. So we need to get our youth in the electrical business trained to do alternative energy. A greater understanding of renewable energy systems is important to the expansion of the industry. Jason Yearling of the Fallsbrook Center says the more people know about renewable energy, the more likely they will adopt it. I, th I think the biggest way to increase the usage of it is to um, in increase people's knowledge of the systems. So if they're more educated and they're more familiar with the systems, then they'll create a need uh, and that need will create jobs. The government's mandate includes educating the public about new systems of energy by informing the public of environmental benefits as well as the possible financial savings the government hopes more people will get involved. I'm looking at education uh, for folks that want to get into installing or, or, and maintaining, um, look at incenting folks to develop fuel, uh, so biomass or, or wood pellets. Um, to sell to individuals who have those types of systems. So it's really looking at the whole supply chain. The amount of electricity from renewable energies in New Brunswick is currently 30 percent of all generated power. The government has promised to increase the amount of green energy in New Brunswick to 40 percent within five years through expansion in conventional hydro, wind and biomass. You know some of the initiatives we're looking at is how can we further develop our own natural resources, you know, the forestry industry for example, and use our own natural our own natural resources uh, for heating or electricity purposes, so using for example biomass. Moving forward in renewable energies requires more education and professional training. Currently two colleges in New Brunswick, Miramichi and Moncton, offer programs on renewable energy systems. In Woodstock, Kyle DuPont, Community College News. People notice when the price of gas goes up. They used to look at those driving diesels with envy, but not anymore. Ethan W. Hazlitt reports on the rising costs of diesel. Diesel used to be the cheaper alternative to gas. Now it can be 20 cents or more above regular. The spike in diesel prices is hitting truckers hard cutting into their earnings. I struggle with mine and I'm one of the fortunate ones that has got my truck paid for. But. Diesel is an important part of this truck stop's bottom line. As prices rise, keeping those customers is getting more difficult. The other thing too that, uh, that hurts is where we're so close to the U.S. border. There's a lot of people now when the price gets up this, this high, they're definitely doing some serious uh, 
cross-border shopping. Grant says running a truck stop is not easy. A mere tenth of a cent can mean the difference between having a busy day or a slow one. Since September 2009, the price of diesel has edged above gasoline. As the price of transporting goods goes up, trucking companies have to recover their extra costs. Consumers will pay more. Because everything that we carry, we use diesel to carry it and uh, we have to pass the, the increase in price on to the customers. Even though you may not drive a diesel, the price of the fuel can still affect your budget. Diesel has typically been used in larger vehicles like these rigs. Diesel power offers more kilometers per liter when hauling heavy loads. That means a bigger payoff per trip. Despite the price increases, the Conservation Council's David Kuhn believes that diesel is still the best way to go for transporting goods. You can get higher fuel efficiency of diesel. If the particulates are well controlled, then uh, that's an advantage. The downside from using diesel is it's known for being a dirtier fuel. Well, it, it, has, it has higher particulates when you compare the two in terms of the emissions. Many truckers and transporting companies will likely continue to use diesel. Grant believes advancements in gas technology could someday replace diesel as a fuel of the future. I don't think diesel will become obsolete, but I do think that there will be other methods of fuel sometime in the future that we will have to look at carrying. Diesel will remain the staple of industry use. For cars, vans, and other small vehicles, Grant thinks gas is more efficient. In Woodstock, Ethan has the Community College News. When we come back, do buildings make a community? Welcome back. This show is produced entirely by New Brunswick Community College students. Tech innovator and co-founder of Apple, Steve Jobs, passed away this year. Apple products have become an integral part of the day-to-day -day lives of millions of people. We took to the halls with an iPhone 4 to see how people reacted to his passing. It's very sad news that he passed away, especially considering his battle, his long time battle with the baby was cancer and cancer. I think it's a terrible tragedy. Not many people realize, but a lot of the technology we rely on on a daily basis was actually originally developed or thought of by him. It's a real surprise because he's made such an impact on the technological world, but an even greater impact on the world at large because of, I mean, Everybody I know has an iPhone or a Mac computer or some sort of software developed by Steve Jobs. Jobs had been suffering from pancreatic cancer since 2004. Since the news of his death, public tributes have been paid by such notable people like Barack Obama, Bill Gates and Steven Spielberg. Today cell phones are more common than ever. Health concerns are being raised and people are being told to use cell phones less often. Jill Constantine reports. They may cause cancer. Hello? They recommend that consumers limit the length of phone calls and instead send text messages. I don't even have home phones, so cell phone is my only mode of communication. I'm self-employed and I use a cell phone all day, every day, but I keep my questions and time on it quite short. I need my cell phone. <laughs> cell phones emit non-ionizing radiation. The International Agency for Research on Cancer recently classified this type as possibly carcinogenic. The number of cell phone users in Canada has grown to more than 24 million since 1987. Despite the warnings, some people won't change their habits. You're going to get brain cancer whether you use a cell phone or you don't use a cell phone. If it's in your body, you're going to get it. It depends on your cells. I don't really think it has anything to do with cell phones, to be honest with you. Health Canada reminds consumers that the scientific evidence is far from conclusive. They say more research is needed. In Woodstock, Jill Constantine, Community College News. Chronic diseases like cancer and diabetes now account for six out of nine deaths in the world. Here in New Brunswick, nearly 25% of the population has some form of chronic disease. I reported on how communities and the government are working to combat these global killers. There was dancing, massaging, and more dancing. 
The Balls in Your Court kickoff to wellness event was held in Woodstock this October and was aimed at increasing awareness about several health issues, including obesity, smoking, and mental health. I think they were probably a little lost. Kathy Sherwood Orson is the Western Valley Wellness Coordinator for Woodstock and helped organize this event. I think they need to get the idea of what wellness means because it's not just about being on a diet or exercising, it's about learning to care for yourself. Orson has also worked in mental health counseling for 17 years. She says the public still has not grasped the idea of personal wellness. It's about learning that it's all around, taking good care of yourself, getting enough sleep, eating enough, being confident and connected to your community. It's about wellness, it's all around. Some health concerns are a personal responsibility. But people seeking psychiatric help for mental illnesses might be waiting over six months to see a psychiatrist. Premier David Allward says the government does have a plan to address the long wait times for mental health. The first investments this year are in the neighborhood of a million dollars uh, and we're um, working with communities and the mental health organizations within communities uh, to help us develop the strategies. In 2009, one out of every seven dollars from the province's total income was spent on health care, roughly two and a half billion dollars, the fourth highest in Canada. But New Brunswick also had one of the lowest health expenditures per person at thirty-nine hundred dollars. Most towns have older houses that represent their culture and history. Often though, such buildings are lost to neglect or indifference. In this editorial, Jeff Stairs looks at the importance of our historic properties. Woodstock's claim to fame is as New Brunswick's first incorporated town. That means it's old. And among the biggest draw for tourists is the many heritage homes and buildings. But when it comes to preserving these important aspects of the town's character, Woodstock's track record isn't great. Walk down a street in any older town and you'll find beautiful historic buildings restored to their former glory you'll likely also find buildings that don't exactly fit in with the neighborhood. Woodstock, like other towns, has a habit of replacing their grand buildings of yore with significantly less spectacular modern architecture. This post office? Well, it was always a post office, but a huge brick building stood here until the 1950s. Where this Tim Hortons is now? It used to be Town Hall, another beautiful old building. They may be cheaper and easier to build, but let's face it, Newer buildings just aren't as inspiring. Emily Clark is a member of the Carlton County Historical Society. She says education is the key to developing an appreciation for historic buildings. I think it has to do with local history being taught. And instead of just saying who lived there, we should also talk to people about how we can utilize these buildings in the future so that they are of some economic significance to the town. It's buildings like the L.P. Fisher Library, named after Woodstock's first mayor, that give a town its character and help to define its identity. While some might view the preservation of such buildings as costly and superficial, the benefits could be great. Studies have shown that maintaining historic properties can provide a foundation for the regeneration of towns and cities. They can reinforce a sense of community and make important contributions to the local economy. National and municipal lists of protected buildings are growing, and it's a good first step. The greatest obstacle to preservation, though, is cost. Renovating an old building can cost hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars. Authorities should be offering tax incentives and rebates for anyone willing to undertake such a project. Unfortunately, where some programs exist, they're often hard to come by. Relaxed building codes for heritage projects would also go a long way toward ensuring the revitalization instead of the destruction of our historic properties. In Woodstock, Jeff Stairs, Community College News. That's our show for today. Stay tuned for other journalism showcases. And for more of our work, visit jschoolnbcc.ca. Thanks for watching.